All right, so this topic here today is really going to set us apart in how we deal with sales. Now, my, my fear is many of you are already using this because this is a pretty well-known idea. However, knowing and doing or knowing and applying correctly are oftentimes two different things. So what I wanted to hit today is expectations and sales process. Um, Sandler's really come up with a vernacular about this and really paved the way and they call it an upfront contract. So that's another way that you're going to hear it is upfront contracts, setting agendas. Um, it's really project management is what this this is, if you think about it in the, its most holistic uh, viewpoint. So here's what I'd like to do. Um, if you will, like to get a couple of you to participate in this and we'll write this down. So what was the situation, a selling situation that you've had recently? Um, first time appointment, right? So, talk, so think back to first time appointment. And by the way, if you can't think of any first time appointments, prospecting, I think is next week. So uh, any first time appointments, that was a joke, by the way, I was hoping to see some smiles <laughs> on that one. Um, so what was a first time appointment? What was the situation? Who were the buyers and their titles? Um, what were you hoping to accomplish and then what did you say after hello? So let me give you a second or two to think through that. Um, what was the situation, buyers and titles? What were you hoping to accomplish? And what did you say after you said the hello and got past the niceties to, to get into the, the meeting? So um, who would like to, like to get one or two of these, please? So I know DeQuill, if I could grab one from you, maybe Wade, uh, okay. Mike, I'm not sure if you're up for that. Mm -hmm. All right, you want to kick us off to Quill? That's fine. Um, so um, recently, I, I, I was speaking with a, a gentleman from a company that we're we're going to be dealing with. This um, we we'll, we'll just call we'll call him Chris, um, okay. and he is um, a project engineer. Okay. And um, he has um, um, an idea for um, a software that that he would like to incorporate into the organization. Okay. Um, the problem is, is that um, Chris, he, he doesn't know how to present it correctly um, to to his his management group. So his first attempt, they kind of um, kind of shot him down on it. Um, so we were kind of meeting with him to to work with him on finding a way in to have that conversation. Um, ultimately, um, we kind of ended it with. Um, you know, Chris, you have to. Um, okay, so let me pause you there. Let me pause you there, and I'll ask you this question. So you were, it was Chris. Uh, title was project engineer, and what you were hoping to accomplish is a brainstorm on how to get this idea um, through the through the organization to get them accepted. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay, and then what did you say after you said hello when you did the niceties? So after we said hello. Um, our next question was, um, so what's what's happening um, okay. currently at, at your organization? Perfect. Okay. So what's happening? Love it. Well done, DeQuill. Nice bullet point. Do, do, do. Love it. All right. <laughs> now, who's going to follow up? You want to hit it, Mike, or Wade next? I got you, Brian. Um, right, cool. So situation was, um, came off a LinkedIn prospect. Um, we will call her... Uh, Jen, she is a senior recruiter. Um, they have um, a ton of open positions for Android app developers. Um, they have about 21 open recs and they are currently using two other talent, um, talent agencies that are not cutting it. Okay. So um, the call we were hoping to accomplish was um, either to get right into it because they are under a time crunch. So they were looking to move very quickly. Okay. Uh, so can I sum, sum that up in like a yes, no decision? Yeah. Okay. And then what did you say right after uh, you said hello? Uh, very similar to DeQuill. We wanted to learn a little bit more about the actual company itself. Okay. So uh, was it something like, tell me a little bit more about your company? Yeah. Yeah. Because they're a startup. Okay and they're kind of going in a bunch of different directions so it was hard to nail down exactly what they were doing okay cool thanks mike you got one um not 
I'm struggling here. I, 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 first of all, I missed part of your instructions due to wonky internet. So, so we're coming up with a. So uh, it, it's uh, a recent uh, first time appointment ever that you're on. Who are the buyers and their, their titles? Uh, what were you hoping to accomplish in that meeting? And what did you say right after you said hello? <laughs> Yesterday, we had a uh, call with a software company, met with the CEO and the chief engineer, and they had reached out on the internet to us and they were looking for uh, an audit of their security services. And um, we absolutely got bulldozed by the CEO uh, telling us, this is what I want, this is why I need it, and can you do this? And we couldn't even get past, uh, hey, how you doing? What's your company do? So eventually we got around to talking about the company, but we had to ask, do you mind? It doesn't sound like we're a fit, but can, we have a couple ideas how we could fit for you down the road. Okay, so perfect. So CEO, chief engineer, uh, for uh, the purpose of the conversation was to um, talk about audit security and we didn't even get a chance to say anything. We got bulldozed, so there wasn't anything after hello. Is that right? That's, that's exactly what happened. Awesome. All right. Really, really good stuff. So here's what I was going to do, and I'm not sure how I'm going to do this with so few on here, but we'll try it nevertheless. Um, I'm going to put you both in, or I'm going to put you into a couple of different uh, groups. So I guess it's going to be, um, well, I'm going to, we'll try this out. We'll do this randomly. I'm going to put you into breakout rooms, and then I'm going to join each breakout room and give you instructions, but it will be super quick, super easy. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording here so as we go into the breakout rooms. Um, and if you can, um, just remind me whenever we come back on to hit the recording again. So I'll go ahead and hit pause. Um, I'll put us in the breakout rooms and hopefully this works. I did this earlier and there we go. Okay, here we go. Ah, son of a gun. So we're going to hit pause here so we can. Thanks to Quill, you're the man. All right. So here we go. Um, so let's ask the buyers first. So what I did, Wade and Christiana, is I asked uh, Mike and the Quill to play the part of the buyer. And okay, so buyers, how what do we want to know from the from the seller or for the from the company? What type of information would we like to know? I had to quill. Okay, so we we, <laughs> we came up with with three things that we want to know. Up okay, front is basically is um, can 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 this solve our problem? Okay. All right. Two is um, um, is your solution the best solution, and why? Okay. Right. And then third is price. All right. Got it. Um, and now, how long would you be willing to give that salesperson? Uh, 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Okay. And what decisions would you like to make at the end of it? Um, basically, is the product a fit for what we're looking for? So what decision is that? Um, so we're looking to just to determine if it's a, if it's a fit, um, meaning that. So really no decision, our, just, just no, an understanding, right. but no decisions, right? An understanding of the solution, basically. Okay, yeah. just to understand, but real no decisions. Correct. You mean okay. a decision to, to 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 go to the next step, or to buy, or to reject? Is that what you're looking for? No, just as a buyer, because I think the Quill and you summed it up. It's like, man, eh, don't really look at like I, I don't want to make any decisions. If I choose to, great. If not, no worries. Is, is mm -hmm. that kind of? Yeah, well, I, and I think that's the kind of what we were talking about, Mike. Is that the uh, the type of buyers that we are? is that um, you know, we can t have the conversation, we can look at the product, and then we're gonna take a moment to kind of rehash and go through that um, and, and not make a, you know, a quick decision on it. Um, 
like I said, they usually give us tough 24 hours to actually make the decision. Interesting. Well, so remember that thought. I'll come back to that. So Wade and Christiana, uh, I like these two groups. So the two groups that are on camera and the two groups that aren't. What the heck? All right. So Wade and Christiana, um, what did you come up with? So you were the sellers and I asked you as the selling team, um, what did you want to know of that buyer? Yeah. So it's kind of funny um, what their problem was. Okay. Um, so what specifically they were looking to solve, um, what their team looked like that was currently in place to solve that, or if they didn't have a team, um, if there was a specific project that they had in mind, or whether, you know, in our case, whether it was more of a staffing solution, what their timeline was. Um, so whether they were kind of under the gun or needed to, you know, could take their time on this. Um, in terms of time, 30 minutes max. Find okay. that our long meetings, 45, can kind of drag on and uh, people kind of get burnt out. And then third step is just another meeting. Um, so, you know, set up an additional meeting for project details or to um, invite any, uh, you know, other you know, managers or higher ups that need to be involved in the decision making. Interesting. Okay. So here, it, and, and this is something that's recently changed, except, especially since we're done. Um, everything's almost everything right now is virtual. So in the old days, you would find that a, a buyer would tend to want to only give 10, 15 minutes, just that quick introduction. But now that we're so used to these, uh, th these uh, meetings, we have 30 minutes as a typical here. Um, but it, so one thing that I screwed up here, and this was my fault, it, I should have asked the buyers, what information do you want to give away? And sellers, what information would you like to give away? So let me let me say that first to the buyers. What information do you want to give up as the buyer? You're on uh, mute, Mike. I would want to give, you know, be completely transparent about my problem. You, you would be completely transparent? Yeah. Okay. How about yourself, Dequil? Yeah, transparent about the problem, but I think um, I wouldn't be as transparent with probably um, my budget goals at the time. Yeah. Um, so um, transparent fully up until that point. Okay, got it. And then from a, uh, a selling standpoint, how what information would we want to give up from a selling standpoint? Um, I'd be fully transparent, uh, but not on price. Um, ah, so would not, not, but not, and I don't want to be like lying about the price, but I would avoid discussing it at all costs. Correct. And so what, and this is where there starts to be some, some tension. So even on the online, the time starts to align a little, a lot better than what they used to, but in order to go through what you were talking about, identify the problem, what they're doing today, the timeline, the budget and everything else, that's going to take a lot more than 30 minutes. So you start to have a miss. And oftentimes if you go too deeply into this, and you don't align what the next steps are, then that's where people can really get caught in, in pipeline. So to share a screen again. You know, the, the purpose of this exercise is to really show that there, there is oftentimes right from the start, a little bit of, of misalignment, right? So we're, we're going to be transparent about the problem. And you two are pretty good. But Mike, you talked about that CEO yesterday. How transparent was he? Yeah, 100%. Right. So there gets that, that, um, that contention right off the bat. So the, the idea behind this or the thoughts behind setting up the expectations is if it's going to be a no, an NO, I want a KNOW as quickly as possible. And if we can start with the end in mind, and that's a beauty about most of the, the people on the call here, is we tend to be a little bit more analytical. So we can take that um, end in mind and reverse engineer the process to help guide them there. And that's really what we want to be is we want to act as that Sherpa, right? Because if we act as that Sherpa, it's a lot easier to get up to the, to the summit of where we want to go. So quick quiz, you get extra credit if you know who these two folks are. Hillary, Hillary and Sherpa. Everest, though. 
<laughs> yeah, it is exactly it. So Hillary, uh, Hillary, and uh, the lat and the and uh, the Sherpa is Tenzing Norgay, I think is how you pronounce his name. But well done, Mike. You got the uh, you got the mm -hmm. climber. So we want to be that Sherpa. In order to be that Sherpa, it really gets to be, you know, somewhat simple once you take the couple of minutes to figure it out. And and what do I mean by that? Well, it's this. What happens right before you get that signed sales agreement? And then right before that, what happens? And then, right, it's, it, you ever see that um, movie? It's a, it's a classic, right? It, it's extremely well acclaimed. I mean, unbelievably mind altering. Uh, Dumb and Dumber, or not Dumb and Dumber, uh, Dude, Where's My Car? You ever see that stupid movie? Yeah. Dude, where? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, so so uh, every time I go, and then, right, that, um, mm -hmm. That scene whenever they go to the Chinese restaurant and then no one then, right? So keep going back until there's no one then um, to the very beginning. And so it might look something like this. So what is your process? And in the most simplistic, I break it up like this. And then and I, I look at this as, and especially with what you're doing uh, later on today, uh, Wade and Christiana, where we're talking about ABM and the prospecting, <laughs> I call this marketing where we're aligning sales and marketing into these stages. So stage zero would be that outreach. Whenever we have that list of the ideal uh, customer profiles, those ICPs. So if they're in stage zero, they're ICPs. When we get to stage one, that's an exploratory meeting. If they show up, it moves from that MQL to SQL to an opportunity after we go to stage two, right? If they show up, and they go to stage two, then it's in some type of pipeline management. So I don't know how long your pipeline management is. I don't know if you have some easy yes that they can say yes to that might add a couple of stages, but it could simply go from pipeline management down to contract legal, right? So solution presentation, and that's your closed one, right? So whatever your process looks like, there's going to be a beginning and an end of the call. And so the visual that I'd like you to take, and this can be a little bit confusing if I don't explain it. So let me get to some explain as they say in I Love Lucy. Whenever you're at the beginning, you want to tell them where we're going. Always tell them where they're going. Because again, if it is a, and it goes back to this rule right here. If it's a no, then I wanna know as quickly as possible. And that's really one of the biggest benefits to this upfront contract. If we say, hey, this is where we're heading and they're going, I don't wanna go there. Well, great, where would you like to go? And then you can decide whether or not that's acceptable to you because that has to be a peer-to-peer -peer agreement of where we're going. Because if I'm saying, hey, I'm going to the beach, but the picture in your mind is like this beautiful, um, you know, white sand, palm trees, beauty. And they're thinking of like Antarctica. Uh, that's a beach too. And no, I don't want to go there, right? So we have to make sure that we're all on the same page. So whenever we look at this, at, at the very end, what are we going to ask them to do? And so that's what we want to set up on the upfront contract. Now, once we get we go from the beginning, we tell them where they're going to end, and then we also tell them what potential next step is. So here's what I mean by that. I was on a, on a sales call uh, a while back, and our process, we did a, a small yes, where we did an assessment, where we did an evaluation. Anyone else do evaluations, assessments for a first step? Just, just one? Okay. So sometimes you do some type of study or small assessment, right? And that was our what we called um, our first easy yes. And then after that, after that assessment, they bought the, the bigger engagement. So here's what, what we did, what I did is I said, hey, listen, um, at the end of this, one of a couple of things is ha can happen. One is you can either, um, you know, purchase the assessment, or we can decide, hey, let's let's move forward. And moving forward means we decide who's going to participate. We sign the paperwork. We uh, we uh, schedule the dates, and we get started. Right. So it could be either a small thing or the whole thing. But at the very end, I forgot to allow them to buy the way you wanted to buy. 
he bought like I did. He was super like, let's go, let's go, let's go. So he goes, so at the very end, he says, yes. And I go, okay, great. So we'll do the assessments. So I was going to small sell him the small thing, but he was saying yes to the whole thing. So with all of this in mind, you want to allow them to be able to buy the way they buy. Don't allow us to step in the way. So DeQuill and Mike, going back to a comment that you said earlier, is we like to think things over. We have a 24-hour role, right? I hate the 24-hour role as a buyer. I'm the complete opposite, right? I'm like, I buy stuff sight unseen. The two cars ago, actually, the last two cars that I bought, I bought sight unseen. I said, I called them up. I said, here's what I want. Do you have it? Yes. Here's the price I'm willing to pay. Can you do it? Yep. Got it. I'll drive down. Let's pick it up. Have the paperwork done. Right. I hate shopping. I, I'm a ridiculously stupid decision maker in, in the speed at which I make decisions. So if you're selling to me, don't screw it up by making me wait and read stuff over. Just go, would you like it? Yeah, let's go. Right. So you have to allow the buyer to buy the way that they want yet keep the process moving forward. So this is where we're always wanted to say, hey, this is where we're going to end up. Are you comfortable with that? So let me give some real world examples. Well, actually, before I give real world examples, feedback off of that, I probably didn't say that as clearly as I ought to. There's likely a couple of questions. So let me just pause and get some feedback so far. Go ahead, Mike. So your example of your impulse buying is, is you. Uh, alone, I, I tend to sell to groups of decision makers. And, uh, you know, I, I never have seen like a group make like that kind of like decision, Correct. you know, that quick. So, and, and, you know, when I was talking to the quill, yeah, think about it, because I, I, it's almost like a knee, knee jerk, you know, well, we got to go back and huddle. <laughs> we got to, mm -hmm. we got to make we have consensus is, is here, make sure consensus is here. So if I want them to huddle in front of me, and yeah. I want to make that part of the process. Go ahead, yeah. Dequil. Yeah. So, in kind of in line with Mike, um, and and yes, we would we would love to have them huddle right in front of us, right? But um, in my experience, a lot of people, a lot of groups, they don't want to have that discussion in in front of the person who's presenting them or they're going to be making this deal with, right? Um, only because there's some internal things they may not want you to have privy to. Mm -hmm. um, or just to kind of see how their war room works, right? Um, so um, yeah, kind of in line with, with Mike. So and, and I think that's usually why when you're dealing with um, a group like that, you know, probably one of your most important questions is, okay, what's the next step? And if it's okay, we make a decision in 24 hours. Okay, let's let's meet within that 24 hour frame. Yeah. So and, and I <laughs> like where you're heading. So we we have alignment, but what I'm going to suggest is we don't ask them, we tell them we'd be the guy, we're yeah. the guide. Yeah. Because here's the challenge. How often have they purchased what you sell? And, and the likelihood is they don't know how to buy it as efficiently as you know how to have them buy it. Mm -hmm. And they're going to screw things up and they're going to delay it. So if we're the Sherpa, and again, this goes back to what is your mindset? Are you truly looking to help them? Or are you looking to schlep stuff? There's a difference between schlepa and or schlepping and Sherpaing, right? So I'm going to suggest that we are Sherpaing, say that five times real fast, not schlepping. All right. So if we can tell them the map, give them the map. Hey, this is the way that most people buy this. Give them the map. So at the so at the beginning, let's let's give a couple world world examples. At the beginning, stage zero, whenever we're doing our prospecting, we're going to do a permission based opener. Hey, um, looking for some help. Um, can I share with you the purpose for me reaching out, and you can tell me whether we're, whether or whether or not it's worth five uh, five minute conversation. That's a mini upfront contract. That's saying, hey, I'm going to tell you what I'm calling about, and then you tell me if it's worth a five-minute conversation. Sure. Then you go through that conversation. You have the five-minute five, five minute conversation, and then at the end, you say, hey, can I make a suggestion? Sure. Why don't we do this? Why don't we um, have a conversation, talk a little bit about what's working, what isn't, um, 
I can share with you a little bit about what we're doing in an ideal world, um, one or two things is going to happen. One is you say, oh my gosh, I love it. Or, oh my gosh, um, let me buy it. If it's a little bit easier, like what you're doing, uh, Wade, on a, that transactional side of the, the staffing. Um, or you say, um, so you say, oh my gosh, um, or at the end of it, one of a couple of things happens. One is, hey, uh, pretty good stuff. Let's set up a next conversation with you or me. Or maybe we bring in a couple of other people into the conversation to keep, uh, to keep going down the path. So depending on what your end point is, is how you, you structure it, right? So let me pause there. I don't know if I was as clear as I'd, I'd like to have been there. So questions or feedback off of that. Did you see the subtle difference? Yeah, and you're letting them lead almost. You're letting them set, you know, exactly what. I know that goes against, you know, we're guiding them through the process, but you're letting them make decisions that are best suited for them rather than trying to set your own agenda and get the information you want. It really goes to this. Let me let me do a quick a quick thing for you here. Um, have I done the the card the card experiment with you before? I don't think so. Okay, so let me do this. Um, who who here is willing to play a game? Um, maybe get a little bit embarrassed by playing said game because uh, you're going to screw up. And uh, by the way, are you seeing a whiteboard here? Okay, so who's willing to play a game? Uh, maybe potentially be a little bit embarrassed, but you won't get hurt. And if it gets too much pressure, you can quit at any time. And you have to know a deck of cards. Who here is willing to play that game? I'll do it. Okay, Wade, we got it. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing for one second. I'm going to pause my sharing and I'm going to write something down. Okay, so I am writing something down. Okay, here we go. You ready, Wade? Go for it. Okay, so um, in, a, in a deck of cards, uh, there's four, what are these things called? Four, shoot, I should have thought about this before. Four suits. Thank you, Dequil. Four suits. Okay, so in, in the four suits, what are the four suits, Wade? Spades, clubs, diamonds, hearts. Okay, so pick any two of those. Okay. Uh, and, oh. and you have to tell me, sorry. I uh, will go spades and hearts. Spades and hearts. Okay, so I'm going to write spades and hearts. So between spades and hearts, pick one of those two. Uh, let's go spades. Spades, and that leaves? Clubs, diamonds, hearts, or... Yeah, so between you said spades and hearts, and you said spades, and that leaves hearts. Okay, so hearts. Thank you. All right, then we'll screw that up. Okay, so we have hearts, and then um, within the within the hearts, you have um, the number cards, and um, what are the ones with the pictures? Face cards. Oh, face cards. Okay, so numbers and face. So between numbers and face, pick one of those two, please. Go face cards. Face cards. Okay, and that leaves numbers. Okay. Um, and then in the numbers, you have even and odds. So within even and odds, um, pick one of those two. Go odds. Odds. Okay. And within odds, now this, you picked the hard one, man. Um, so in the odds, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, um, what, are the, what are the odd numbers that we have? Three, five, seven, nine. Oh, you're smart, man. You didn't pick the one, right? Because that's the ace. So three, five, seven, nine. So of the three, five, seven, nine, pick any of those two. Go three and nine. Three and nine. And then between three and nine, pick one of those two. Seven. Between three and nine. <laughs> between three and nine, pick one of those two. Wait. Either a three be... or either a nine. Oh, 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 oh. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, we'll I told you you'd screw it up. Don't worry. You're doing really well. <laughs> we'll go three. Three? Three of hearts? Um, yes. Three of hearts. Okay. So check it out. Before we started, I wrote three of hearts. Mm. How did I do that? Some of you, it's super obvious. Others are you going like, oh my gosh, how'd you do that? And you led them there by your questions. Correct. I knew exactly where I wanted to go. I was the Sherpa. And, I, and I, he said spades, which screwed me up. And I had to say, which leaves 
hearts. Okay, and then between the hearts, you can pick face and numbers. Which one did you pick? He, put chick, or he picked face, but I needed them to pick numbers. So if you remember my upfront contract at the very beginning of this is you can quit at any time because what he could say is, no, I want spades. Give me spades or I'm out. Mm -hmm. And if that was indeed the case and I didn't have any spades, it said, listen, we got a problem. I don't have any spades. Are we done? And that all comes from the upfront contract at the very beginning. And because <laughs> I knew exactly where I was going, I was able to Sherpa him along with likely him not even seeing it because I was playing dumb. I was using my curiosity statements, my genius statements, right? Which, which leads, which means, which leaves, right? And, and like, oh, what are those things again? Like, I don't know suits, right? Broadway play put on by, by a bunch of psychologists. I was acting, right? Like, oh, what is that thing again? Oh, you, you did good there, Wade. Nice, you chose the hard ones and you got that right. So if I, if I just got like just per se, if I had gone with nine, would you have gone to another question or? Yeah, would that, if, you, would that have just if been, you said oh. nine, you said, oh, nine of hearts and that would leave the three of hearts. Ta-da, three of hearts. Gotcha. Okay. So that's what we wanna do with that upfront contract. That upfront contract, allows us to Sherpa the person because we know exactly the destination. Because without that destination, we can't properly guide them. And if they say, I, I want to make a left up here, and you know making a left is a disaster, you can say, well, we could make a left, but here's my fear. If we make a left, here's all the things that can happen. Do you want to make that left? Yeah, I want to make that left. I can't make that left with you. So what should we do? I'm making the left. All right, got it. I wish you luck. I'll check within you or check it back with you in a couple of weeks if you're still alive. Let's see if we can't make that right. I mean, that's intent and that's essentially what we're doing here. And that's the brilliance of this. Because if you notice, whenever we're doing this, we are, we know the beginning and we know the end. And we're constantly telling them where we're heading. So now it's not scary. So for example, to your point, the quill, whenever I want to get the room, room together, mm -hmm. that's going to be somewhere around here, right? So maybe it's whenever I'm doing, I, I send it to contract legal. I say, listen, while it's in contract and legal, because that takes forever, why don't we get together as a group Make sure that we've solutioned this together. Make sure that everybody's interests are heard and understood and that we have the best solution. So when's the best time that we can do that? And it's a group solutioning session. Whenever I have a whole bunch of people involved, that might be the thing that I need to do, especially whenever it's complex, especially like you were saying to Quill, um, there's a person who would like to champion this thing, but he doesn't know what everyone else is going to think. Mm -hmm. And so it's, hey, it's, let's, it's you and me against the world here. Let's get you the win. Right? What, who's all involved? And in we go and we'll learn this in, I think, two weeks, the timeline technique, um, where we get the, the cast of characters who's all involved, what's our relationship with them, what's their disk profile from a communication standpoint, all of those things we'll get and we'll solution this together. You could even get paid for the solutioning session potentially. So there's a number of different things that we can do it. All right, so what I'd like you to do then is to simplify this and I'll send this in, in, uh, in the email here with a recording is to be able to do this well, there's a seven step pre-call plan. And, and it's as simple as this, what's the objective or what's the purpose of the meeting, right? And by stating that right up front, we can get to that no or no, the N-O or K-N-O-W. So what is the objective, the purpose of the meeting? And that couches everything. And if somebody goes, no, 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 that's not the purpose that I had, I was looking for an understanding. Okay, no worries. So let's, let's fast forward. It's the end of the meeting. 
we have a wonderful understanding. You're like, oh my gosh, I understand this completely. We go to our dude, where's my car line? Then what? And then, and then, until we, and then them to a decision. Well, then I'd make a decision. Okay, so then we go back to our conversation a couple of weeks back, whenever we're talking about the um, getting the, the change in behavior, we do a civic. We summarize, validate, get the level of importance and commitment level, right? So we civic it. So what's the objective of the meeting? Then what are the potential outcomes? And there's really a, a couple. Um, one is a no, but then more importantly, what's your ideal? What's your home run? If the stars align, everything's perfect, ta-da, this happens. What's that ideal? And be very, very, very specific on that ideal with the steps involved. Because the more clarity that you can give to the ideal and exactly what would have to happen, that's whenever you're going to get pushback. And that's really what you want. You want pushback here because if I get pushback at the very beginning of the call, because remember, I am doing this at the very beginning. Because if I give the information at the beginning or if I get commitment at the beginning, what have I not given up yet? If I ask for commitment up front, what have I not given yet? What control of the call? I've not given up control 100%. And what else? Because when do I lose control? Before or after I give all my information? After. After. Because if I give all my information away, they don't need me anymore. Mm -hmm. And so this is where you'll have to be, and this, this is where experience comes into play, right? Because I'm going to handle the person that Mike had completely differently than I'm going to handle somebody like a, a DeQuill or a Mike was buying. You're going to have to handle me completely different than that guy, that CEO versus a Tequil versus a, I don't know how you buy Christiana or Ellie or Wade, right? So you have to look at each person a little bit differently. And then once we bring on and layer on the complexity of all those buyers, right, of all the people within the organization that, that there's going to be part of this buyers group, that's where we have to take each and every one of those into account. And that's why selling, although simple to understand, is not always easy to do. So all of this complexity starts to come into play. And we have to take all of that into account with the idea of to get to this end closed one, how do I reverse engineer the steps, let everybody know and make sure that I can get agreement and commitment along the way. And that's the idea behind this. So whenever we're looking at the pre-call plan, what's the ideal and what's the minimal acceptable? So after the end of the first call, maybe the ideal is we're coming back together with a whole entire group to solution it. Or maybe the minimal acceptable is we meet with that same person again to have another conversation to dive down a little bit more deeply to build the trust in order to get commitment to get maybe one or two of those people. So you have to determine, you as a team have to determine what's ideal, right? If everything was in line and they bought like I do, what's the ideal versus what's the minimal acceptable? And you lay both of those out as options. Now, in order to get to that point, they're gonna need some information. And I'm going to need some information. So we have to identify what's the information that we need to give and get in order to get to that objective. And then we need to talk about what questions and objections are likely going to come up whenever we start to ask this. So for example, the quill, you said they might not want to let us know how they wore room. Then I want to handle that. I want to put a label around it. It seems like maybe you're uncomfortable letting me be a part of your war rooming or your decision making. Put a label on it. There's only six to nine of these things. I mean, it, you can start <laughs> that simple. Once you get this down, you're like, oh, right. It's like the, ma uh, the matrix. Remember whenever, uh, what was his name? Gets it and like all the numbers come in. Theo, right? 
Neo, yeah. Neo, 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 yeah. So, yeah, yeah Theo was from uh, another show. All right. So, what are the questions <laughs> that we need to get? And then plan out your mirrors, your labels, your clarifying question, your accusation audit. So, um, if you haven't read this yet, please read um, Never Split the Difference, and, and all of this stuff will make sense. Then you need to know your audience. So back to the Quill and Mike's point, whenever there's a whole group there, we'll get into this in the timeline where we're going to talk about the cast of characters or whatever vernacular you want to put. And we're going to teach you how to do a relationship chart so you can know your audience and exactly what to do for each one. Um, that's the relationship chart here. And then understand the perspective of all the participants and understand what their win is. And that's where you start to get uh, constraint management, right? Whenever you're looking at theories of constraint, you have to figure out what are the biggest constraints that is going to prevent this. That, this is where you find that stuff out. And then in order, once you get all of that done, then you script out what's, what's going to be your upfront contract, what's going to be your hashtag for the next steps. And you script that out. Now, let me give you some framework to do that. Um, and, and it was kind of curious, this hashtag, a uh, hashtag next steps really explains it. You can just use that. So a simplified version is the, the P towel. So think of it this way, towel, towel, right? Think of some Buddhist monk going towel and that has to go P, right? So it's a P towel. So purpose, time, agenda, outcome, horrible, right? But you'll never forget it no matter how hard you try. My daughter is thankfully not on camera, probably rolling her eyes at me right now. Um, but it's- I'm Laughing really hard. <laughs> <laughs> so it's purpose, time, oh agenda, God. and outcome, right? So now here's the advanced version of that because, oh, by the way, they will screw you up on this. I'm telling you now, if you do this simplified version, it might be simplified to understand, but it's more difficult to do because as soon as you ask for their agenda, they oftentimes will just start to run and give you all kinds of great information. And you cannot at that point go, wait, I really appreciate you sharing with me everything that I'm going to need in order to be able to sell you, but could you please stop so I can follow my process, please? You don't want to do that. And oftentimes you can get lost because the most important part of all of this is getting to outcomes. Because as we said, the more specific your outcomes are, the more clearly their objections to those outcomes are going to come up and we can deal with them before we lose our, our leverage. So outcomes, specificity of outcomes is the most important part of this. So don't, don't mess that up. So a more advanced version would be this. So that hashtag, you can see the, the hashtags right here is filled out. So it's gratitude. So you can think of it like this. Um, whoop, go to a pen. You can think of it like this, TT. A A N N Y Y F. Thanks for how much time clarification. What do you want to make sure you co we cover here today? Agenda. Here's what I was hoping to cover. My agenda. Here's why I would say no to you. Here's why you might say no to me. Let's be transparent about that. If we don't decide to say no. Here's what yes could look like, and I'm going to give my ideal, very specific, or if we don't get to that point today, here's the logical next step that we'll take. And then I do a third party story. Here's my biggest fear. Wade, can you give my biggest fear story yet? Uh, I cannot, no. <laughs> okay, uh, sorry to put you on the spot. So here's my biggest, that was my biggest fear that I didn't teach you that yet. So here's my biggest fear story. It is, is something like this. Um, listen, have you ever had that meeting where you're like, oh my gosh, this is the best meeting ever. Things are getting solved. Problems are getting, um, getting fixed. And I mean, amazing things were happening. Then just to have three months, six months, nine months, you're sitting there scratching your head going, we had a great meeting. I thought we solved this and nothing ever happened out of that. You ever had that meeting? And everyone goes, every day of my life. Let, help me to help, let, let's help me to make sure that we don't do that to you. At the end of this, if we haven't decided this is just a bad fit, 
can we make sure to get some next steps on the calendar with action items so that that doesn't happen? Could you help me with that so I don't screw up? Now, here's the beauty about that third party story. You get to the end and they say something like, well, let me think it over. And you go, okay, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Agree with them. That makes perfect sense. I like to think things over too. Oh, wait a second. Do you remember whenever I asked you for help a little bit earlier and you said that you would help me? Yeah, I remember. Well, let's do this, right? So I promised you that I wouldn't waste your time. Why don't we do this? Let's schedule a next time to come back together after you have an opportunity to think about it. You'll likely have some questions between now and then. We can answer some of those additional questions that come up. Um, when, when are you looking to do that? And I'll send you over some blah, 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 and we should have these action items in, in between now and then. And if they say no to that, you can fight them a little bit, but guess what? What they're telling you is it's already a no. Those think it overs or a slow no. So if it's going to be an NO, I want a KNOW as quickly as possible. All right, feedback, pushback on that idea, because a lot of people have heart attacks about this one. <laughs> if you I think, have them, um, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, I, I think getting to the no um, is my favorite part of this. I think it helps you set your agenda. Um, and it's a having a hard time putting this into words, but it's a very easy thing to do. You can usually tell within the first, you know, 10 minutes, whether or not um, by going by this. Um, and I think Devin does this very well because um, I haven't quite led my own meeting yet, but he gets this done very, very well. Um, and especially in, in the sale that we're making, that usually does have a lot of people that need to, um, you know, hear the spiel, go through the details, you know, hear the project details. Um, that first person is going to know if it's going to be a fit or not, you know, right off the bat. So I think that, you know, I, I really enjoy that part of it. Now, one quick um, caution. I don't like to say always, never, but this isn't always. Always proceed with the no. Always proceed with the no. Because if I, because if I say, hey, at the end of this, a couple of things will happen. One is uh, you go, yeah, let's do this. You're going to sign the agreement. We get kicked off and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is the first time we're meeting and they mm -hmm. won't hear anything else. However, if I say, hey, listen, we might decide together this is a horrible fit. I, I might find out that I can't help you. Are you OK if I'm that transparent with you? If I see that I can't help you, I just let you know. And hopefully I can make a good introduction for you. You'll if they're on camera and you say something like that, you'll see them physically relax. It's amazing the credibility and trust factor that will go up just by that line. Now, make sure it's true, but it's amazing the trust factor that you'll get. And, and, and I'll ask the same thing on your end. If, you're, if we're not a fit um, for you, I mean, I think we're pretty good, but we're not ideal for everyone, clearly. Um, if you come to the sense that this isn't for you, you're just not seeing or hearing what you'd like, would you be kind enough to have that same transparency with me? I'll go, yeah, got it. Now on the flip side, and then you can be very specific on the yes. By proceeding with that no, it allows you to have a more robust and, and assertive, not aggressive, assertive yes. So that's a critical, critical takeaway, okay? So here's gonna be my ask. It likely has some upcoming selling scenarios. Put those upcoming selling scenarios through this, um, through that pre-call plan. And if you'd like, shoot it over to me and I'll give you my feedback on it and work through this with you. So um, that will be my Christmas present to you. Send that over mm -hmm. to you and I'll kick it off, okay? So um, takeaways from today. Let's, let's get some lessons learned applications. What do we got? Um. I guess the, the the first exercise was really good. Just to, you know um, how you know people buy differently, right? Um, and understanding um, your, your the person in front of you and how they buy. 
Yeah, absolutely. Be <laughs> keeping that in mind because everyone is a little bit different and that's where you're going to craft your upfront contract just a little bit different. Uh, Mike. Well, we're working on our playbooks, so to speak, sales playbooks, trying to codify that. And I really like the having a map of the buying process to put in front of a, a client. I thought that was, that's really, that would be helpful for us given our complicated sales process. Yeah. And especially with what you're doing, because some people would try to commoditize a good portion of you uh -huh. and there is no commoditization about what you're doing whatsoever. Um, and, and that's same for you, DeQuill and, and Wade, who had to jump <laughs> off. I mean, they try to, everybody tries to commoditize what you do. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not, it is so difficult to be able to do that. So um, Chris, Christiana and uh, Ellie, takeaways for you? I just like the, the hearing the no as soon as possible, if it's going to be a no, like, I, I just think that's always a good thing to, to implement and do. Yeah, my kids do this to me all the time, by the way, these days, they go, <laughs> dad, you're probably going to say no. <laughs> they do it all the time. Christiana. Um, kind of similar, I guess it's, it is good to be transparent and let the client know maybe this won't be a good fit and just getting to the bottom of that as soon as possible. And, and just keeping that an open conversation with them instead of pretending like it's going to be perfect and just running with it. I love it because it, it can get so time consuming to keep following up on dead opportunities. So let me go back to where we started. Um, so DeQuill, on yours with that project engineer, mm -hmm. a simplified upfront contract that I would have done there is, mm -hmm. hey, Chris, listen, I appreciate you bringing us in today. We had a roughly about a half hour set aside. Uh, we still good for that? Yep, absolutely. Got it. Okay, so um, can I get a sense before we jump right into this? Can I get a sense of exactly what you're hoping to accomplish here today? And we'll craft our work around that. Um, blah, 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 blah. Okay, got it. That makes perfect sense. On our end, uh, what we're hoping to cover is how can we, you know, who's all involved with this? How can mm -hmm. we best serve you to get this in front of everyone else? And then a couple of things is going to come out of this. One is to quill, um, based upon what you're talking about, we don't think we can help you. And, and I hope you won't look at this as a waste of time, but are you okay if we say, we can't help you and be that transparent with you. Yeah. I appreciate that. And, and I'll look for the same thing for you. If you're like, oh my gosh, what you're asking me to do makes me super uncomfortable. There's no way I'm going to do that. Would you mind letting us know? Sure. Yeah. Got it. And, and so <laughs> I would think a couple of things would happen out of this. One is um, we say, hey, I think that we have a pretty good plan in place. And then we go ahead and implement that bring in some of uh, those other people involved, um, or maybe we need to come back one final time, uh, role play this out a little bit before we, we feel comfortable in making that. So does that sound like a good use of our time, what we wanna cover here today? Yeah. Got it. Well, I appreciate it. So um, here's my biggest fear, if you could help me out. At the end of this, let's make sure that we do take some action, even if that action is a decision not to do this, or um, the action is let's take some initial steps. Let's make sure that we're on a calendar and get that going. So can we, can you help me make sure that we push that forward? Yeah, yeah, I appreciate sure. that. So yeah. that is my ending right on time upfront contract <laughs> for you to quill. Sorry, I didn't have that for you, Mike, but do you think that could have worked? Yeah. And that's kind of the route that we went with him. Um, yeah. Cause he just, he, he, he just doesn't have a fully thought out plan um, to present it. That's, yep. what, that's the conclusion we came out with. So we're going to kind of work with them and then you know, see if we can get something concise for him to present. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, hey, we'll see you next week, hopefully. Um, and it, once you're uh, done with your upfront contract, feel free to send that to me, okay? Absolutely. See you, everyone. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Uh, thank you.